This is a tiny Pitts biplane, a radio control model, a four channel, full house. The uh, can of soda will give you some idea the size of it. It's made from uh, this kit here, Zeke's Park Scale Models. This kit is unfortunately out of production, but it's one I've had uh, in my supplies for some time. And we are at the stage of hinging the control surfaces. The right aileron has already been hinged with fishing line. You may be able to make out the four little bits of fishing line that have hinged that. And I'm going to uh, go through the process with you of hinging the left aileron. The aileron, as with all the control surfaces on this model, is very thin and small. It's made from 1 16th inch balsa wood. Add in the uh, two pieces of covering and it ends up being a few thousandths thicker than that. This is the fishing line that I'll be using to make the hinges. It's 20 pound test which probably means it would take about 40 pounds to break a strand of it. When measured with a digital micrometer, it's about 12 thousandths of an inch in diameter. To uh, start the holes in the first aileron and the matching locations in the wing, I use this uh, old dental tool, which I've ground down, I straightened it out, and it has been sharpened to a very sharp needle point on it, which is real nice for doing precision work. It's great for uh, helping get splinters out of your fingers. But it's a little, it's not perfectly straight, and it gets a little fat as you get up the shank on it. So I started the, uh, the holes with that dental tool and then completed them full length with one of these T-pins which are nice and straight and reasonably sharp. The only problem is these are kind of fat. The T-pins measure 34 thousandths of an inch which is almost three times the uh, diameter of the fishing line. So it's nice to have a little wiggle room and room to play but that's uh, a little more than we really need. So, for this installation, I'm going to use a sewing needle. You can get sewing needles in a huge variety of sizes, different diameters. They come in uh, numerical sizes. The one on the right, 20 needles, says sizes 3 to 9. Um, and you can look up what that means. I haven't bothered to look it up. Since I've got the, the caliper, I can just measure a needle. And I've taken a pin vise, which is uh, just a small chuck that closes down with four jaws onto something small. I think they were got the name pin vise because, among other things, they're pretty good at holding a pin. And here it's holding a very nice, sharp sewing needle. And this needle measures about 24 thousandths of an inch, a little bit tighter than the uh, 34 uh, from the T-pin. And uh, still nice and uh, relatively loose, although probably we'll get some spring back from the balsa wood fibers, but it's uh, basically a hole that's uh, twice the diameter of the fishing line. The control horn uh, that fits into that slot angles forward, so this is actually the rear of the aileron, and this is the uh, the front part that uh, will have the hinges mounted in it and will attach to the wing. So we want to make sure we put the holes in the correct side of the aileron. I grabbed a couple of steel rulers and these little uh, spring clamps to sandwich the uh, aileron. Uh, it makes locating the holes a little bit easier visually 
in terms of using your eyes to center them and it uh, also prevents you from pushing a needle uh, out the top or the bottom of the aileron. It helps keep the needle centered within the wood. It may not stay perfectly straight but it's not going to be coming out of the uh, the iron-on covering of the aileron. I use this visor which has a uh, built-in LED light to uh, magnify, give me a much better look at what I'm doing. It makes it a whole lot easier for my 67 year old eyes to uh, uh, manage the precision that's needed for this task. I was going to try and show the uh, creation of these holes on camera but it's really hard <laughs> with two hands only to try and control the camera in the process but you can see there's the first hole on the one end the second hole the third hole which is slightly off center but it'll be fine and the uh, fourth hole on the other end and these holes were created with the uh, needle held in the pin vise. Which with the uh, rulers on either side has managed to uh, get to just about all the way through the balsa wood staying uh, within the balsa wood. Here is a uh, section of the fishing line some focus inserted into the aileron uh, much more precise fit than the uh, using the t-pin we want to be sure that the fishing line is completely free especially of oils from fingers and things being transferred to it so that we get a real good bond with the, uh, the thin super glue cyanoacrylate adhesive that we're going to use to uh, bond the fishing line to the balsa. So we'll use a q-tip and uh, clean each section of it, carefully insert it without getting any fingers on it, and then glue it in place after we've cleaned it. We don't want to get glue everywhere in this operation, so I'm using another old dental tool here to dip this into a bottle of thin uh, super glue and pick up just a tiny drop which I'll then transfer to the uh, thread at the hole location and it may take uh, a couple of trips with this to transfer enough glue but this will see that we don't make a mess and get glue everywhere Get a nice big drop on that last transfer. We'll look there and we had some glue run down. Not to worry. We'll just use a q-tip to remove most of that and we can get the residue off if need be with a little bit of acetone. Now to make sure that our glue cures in a similar manner we will use a different tool in this case a small crochet hook and we will use that hook to uh, dip out a little bit of accelerator from the bottle that's way more than we need but that should wick its way down into the hole and cause that super glue to harden up nicely. All right, I pull tested the uh, 
fishing line to make sure it's securely glued and it is it's in there and not coming out and I just used uh, a razor blade to cut it off at about either three-eighths to half an inch may trim it a little bit further before we install it in the airplane now I need to do exactly the same thing with the other three locations on the aileron I won't uh, bore you by showing all of those. I'll do those and then be back in a minute with the next step. Hold this sideways. I'm trying to do this on camera and it's wickedly difficult. If you do that, then it will wick into the hole without really making a mess on the rest of the aileron all right we now have the uh, four hinge pieces securely glued in the aileron they've been pull tested and uh, they're solid so now it's time we're going to tape this on top of the uh, wing and then we will use the uh, needle in the pin vise to create four holes directly underneath these that uh, the other end of these will go to in the wing. Here the uh, aileron has been taped to the wing so that we can use the needle and Create four holes directly underneath those locations. Okay, the uh, holes have been created under the uh, existing hinge locations and they were done with the sewing needle but I used the T-pin just on the very start of the holes to open them up a little bit more just to make it a touch easier to get these hinges inserted. Now the hinges have been inserted through the holes in the wing and several of them are overly long. You can see them uh, coming through their holes in uh, actually all the locations. And that means that in part we can do the gluing from the uh, inside of the wing here, keeping glue away from the hinge line as we uh, hold the aileron up snug against the wing. So I will do that and be back with you in a moment. We'll use the same tools and techniques just fishing a small drop of CA out of the bottle and transferring it and then transferring some accelerator with a different tool the same way. I dipped it in acetone and moistened a rag in acetone and I have now remove most of the uh, CA from the applicator and it's ready for the next job. The Pitts now has two hinged ailerons. The new one is nice and flexible just like the other one. If you work slowly and gently tug on each location you can tell when the hinge is glued in solidly. So need to hinge the uh, elevator and the rudder yet and uh, then this thing is ready for some servos and some control linkages.